Hey everyone, Jamie from iMeasureU, and in this video, we're gonna explore the differences between IMUs and GPS units and their different applications. Before we dive into this, it's really important to know how these units differ in the way that they collect their data. Overall, there's two methods, the unit itself and satellite signals. As we know, with GPS data is collected via satellite signals. And how this works is athletes wear units that exchange position information with these satellites, and from this, the athlete's change in location can be calculated, as well as the time taken, providing you with metrics such as distance, speed, etc. Whereas IMUs collect data about the movement of the unit itself. So when attached to the lower leg, it calculates data on the acceleration of this body segment. When attached to the distal tibia, it calculates data on what's known as tibial acceleration. So for the purpose of this video, we are going to focus on using IMUs for lower limb loading although you can attach IMUs to any body segment and get data on that specific body segment. So let's look at the basic differences. When looking at lower limb loading, specifically with IMUs, you use two sensors, whereas GPS units, you only use one. They're also located in a different position. So with IMUs for lower limb loading, you've got one IMU on either ankle, whereas a GPS unit, is in the upper back in a sleeve, as can be seen in the photo. And this placement is important, as we'll take a look now in this example. So it's due to what we call propagation of force. Research has shown that the higher up on the chain or the body the unit is, the lower the forces, which can be clearly seen in this example. The top, ex the top graph, at least, is an IMU attached to the foot, the middle one is an IMU attached to the back, and the bottom one is an IMU attached to the arm. And we can see how much lower the force is at the arm as well as at the back when compared to the foot. Okay, let's take a look at where each of these units can be used. In field-based sports or field-based settings, both an IMU as well as GPS units will be sufficient, although only the IMU will be able to work indoors as well as underwater. Another solution for an indoor setting might be an LPS solution. So we know that some GPS units do have IMUs or at least accelerometers on board. It is very important to note that the technical specifications are slightly different. So let's just quickly take a look at the differences in sampling rate as well as range. So essentially the sampling rate is just the amount of data points per second. Typically on a GPS unit, the accelerometers only collect data at 10 to 20 hertz, which is essentially 10 to 20 data points per second. Whereas standalone IMU units can collect data up to 1600 hertz. And then let's briefly touch on the range. Those on the GPS unit normally collect data at plus minus 16 Gs. These obviously do vary depending on which company you go for. Whereas the IMU or the standalone IMUs can collect data up to 200 Gs, plus or minus. Although the specs of the accelerometers on a standalone IMU compared to GPS units do vary quite a bit, it is important to note that they are trying to answer two very different questions. This does lead us to our next topic on the type of data collected. As an overview, you'll get biomechanical as well as locomotive data. With GPS units, you're looking to obtain locomotive or positioning data. The type of metrics would be distance, speed, accelerations, decelerations, etc. There are a few more metrics to that, but that's just a quick overview. Whereas with IMUs, you're looking to understand biomechanical loads, which can be defined as the forces and stresses acting on the various hard and soft tissues of the body. And why is this important? As we can see below, in contrast to physiological loads, the biomechanical demands of training have been historically difficult to measure in the field, limiting detailed description of the biomechanical load adaption pathways. So this type of analysis has previously been confined to the lab. And the type of metrics you can expect from IMUs would be when looking at lower limb monitoring, would be tibial accelerations. This is in Gs, but it can also be in meters per second squared. You can identify asymmetries, and you'll get total impact load as well as bone stimulus. Important to note that those bottom two are unique to IMU step currently. So as a quick overview, we can see GPS sensors can detect how far and fast athletes are moving, where IMU sensors track the impact of every step on the body. Okay, now that you understand the difference between these two units, you might be asking yourself, well, when will I use one or the other? Let's dive into that. Starting with GPS, when would you use GPS? 
If you're looking to understand general physiological load of your athletes, GPS is really good, especially for periodization of your training. If you have a large number you're looking to track and monitor simultaneously, GPS once again is really good. And also if you're in an environment that needs speed and distance or where those metrics are important, GPS is a really good bet. Now, let's look at IMUs. When would you use an IMU? So in the return to play process, mainly because IMUs are really great for picking up the nuances in step loading data, which is vital in that return to play process. If you're looking to precisely monitor lower limb load, and that's just purely because of the location of the sensors as well as the specs of them. Once again, understanding asymmetries, also because of the placement of the sensors and the specs of the hardware, it makes IMU a great solution for that. If you're looking to gain deep, specific understanding of drills and sessions and potentially categorize drills in terms of biomechanical load and how difficult they are, IMUs are a great option. All right. Thanks, guys. That's the end of IMUs and GPS. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us.